and welcome, everyone. Uh, what a run that was earlier. That was uh, great fun to watch uh, from Selena. Um, uh, but now it's time for some Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, a very um, long, linear, and yeah, not the most interesting speedrun uh, game uh, there is. Um, however, um, we are only running one chapter today, chapter four this time. And um, there was a incentive for a horse name, so if you could tell me which name one, I will go and change that. Absolutely. Let me just quickly refresh that one more time so we have the most up-to-date information. Yeah, so the winning name for the horse is uh, Horsimus. Horsimus. So, yeah, H-O-R-S-I-M-U-Z. Yes. Very nice. Right. Uh, let me also turn on the autosave feature just to make sure. Okay, it's on. Very good. So then, um, I will go ahead and start uh, the run. Uh, we will start with the first mission of Chapter 4, which is the Joys of Civilization. What's the matter with you? And um, I just got to prepare this very slightly. I'm going to try, this is like a pre-setup, it might not even work, but what we do is we park the horse because in the mission, um, we will actually have to go back to this place and, oh, I forgot something, <laughs> I have to take my shotgun off the horse as well, yeah, yeah. and, uh, alright, shotgun, to have that equipped. All right, uh, switch to first person, and then the timer starts as soon as I skip this cutscene. I'm assuming just press the button, right? Stick em up. And go. I'll meet you back here, Anon. All right. So, uh, in terms of story, where we're at right now in. Uh, this game is uh, we are currently uh, looking for Jack, the um, the little kid from from our uh, caravan and group of people. Um, currently, he's kidnapped, and we are on our mission to find the man who kidnapped him, a man called Angelo Bronte. So uh, what we do is we just ask around town and. Um, so, yeah, Arthur's trying to be inconspicuous first. But by the way, Arthur Morgan is the uh, character that we're playing as, the protagonist of Red Dead Redemption 2. So he's going to ask a question here. You ever hear of a fellow by the name of Bronte? Who's asking? Me. I'm asking. All right. Should also mention we still have uh, a bid war for the beard style that I'm going to choose in a mission about 25 minutes into the run. So, um, yeah, make sure select the one that you'd like to see. But, yeah, uh, so this drunk guy is basically telling us where we can find him. Oh, well, he's given us more information. We're going to talk to some kids in the alley. And we just run over there. It's a bit faster to uh, do certain things in this game in first person. Uh, there's a first person mode and also uh, just normal, regular third person. Uh, some of the animations play a bit faster if you're uh, in first person. And I just find um, general movement of um, when you're on the ground, when you're just walking around. Uh, a bit easier when you're on a keyboard. Uh, combat and all that other stuff, I prefer to do in third person and on uh, on controller because this game is very very heavy on the aim assist. Um, it's very help. It's very good. It's very helpful, and you're really not uh, you're really not at a disadvantage if you use the aim assist um, on controller for this game. Oh yeah. Little kid is about to um, rob us here. But what we do is we just shoot. We set this cart on fire. 
uh, the kid is just gonna run off, and we can tackle him straight away. Yeah, that's good. Very hard to do this on first try, so yeah, lucky I got it there. Um, in any percent, we don't have uh, shotgun ammo, flammable shotgun ammo. We have to do it with a fire bottle, which is even harder, and um, <laughs> it's even uh, a risk of an infinite load here that I've unfortunately had at a marathon before in a full run, so that was not very nice. But um, yeah, we got it there, and everything's fine. And the first mission is over once this uh, little cutscene here that I can't last. skip um, plays. And I see we have some donations, so if you want to go and read them, Parasites, go ahead. Absolutely. Um, fake Yeeted Bean Rune donates $5 with a message know. to the bar, senor, and <laughs> chickens. <laughs> chickens. <laughs> Another one? Yeah. So, um, from uh, the last run, we have uh, NikoHeart167 donating $144.53. Damn. And uh, uh, he's writing, as promised, here is my contributions converted from 120 uh, British pounds towards the death count from Selena's Alien Isolation run. You did incredible, Selena. Thank you very much, Nico, for that. And yeah, indeed, Selena did a fantastic run. Uh, this went towards the uh, the Messenger 100% Save Kappa incentive as well. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you so much for all your donations. And uh, we're all well on our way. Okay, nice rank goal. All right, entering this mission over this fence so we can go ahead and start it here uh, but we can skip ahead um, this is not very fast I know it doesn't seem very fast um, but um, by being in front of them so much we actually make them rub a band a bit and trigger the dialogue a little bit faster um, and yes basically we found um, mr. Bronte who is like a big um, Magnet around the town of Saint Denis, which is you know this big city that we're in right now. Um, like now and now uh, we just found the place basically there, where he is. Uh, so we could just try and go uh, there and see if we can get Jack back. You can see the dialogues overlapping now. So it's indicating that you know, my tricks worked and we're a bit faster than we should be. I guess. Run along now, boy. So in this mission, um, we will have to do something for Mr. Bronte. Uh, we will have to kill some grave robbers. And um, this is also Don't worry, done with a little we trick can't. that we'll use. We just need to the but for right now, all we have to do is just walk up into the house, wait till the cutscene plays, dip as soon as possible. There we go. And we get on our Horsimus horse. And off we go into the distance. Uh, can't outdistance John too much, so I'm going to look behind and slow down to make sure he comes with me. So once he turns the corner here, I can uh, start going a bit faster. We don't need the dialogue to play here. Because we're going to do a fire bottle skip, uh, which is utilized a couple of times throughout the entire run. Basically, um, we light ourselves on fire, and it, using that mechanic, uh, we actually skip a lot of dialogue. Because uh, the game plays like a voice line of Arthur being on fire. Preemptively selecting the uh, fire bottles here. And we can just climb across this fence here. You know, you did good. Your like this dialogue normally needs to play. Yeah, but you can hear that the dialogue is now skipped because the voice line just randomly stopped. 
We will need to heal ourselves. But luckily I have a, a very, very well prepared save file, which um, contains 99 potent Miracle Tonics, so I'm never going to run out of health here, realistically. All right, once we skip this cutscene, we will have to deal with the Grave Robbers. Oh, there he is. Okay, got him. All right. Uh, we don't actually need to. Oh, missed the jump. That's unfortunate. We don't actually need to clear the um, the graveyard, the, the grave robbers um, stash. We can just jump out of the cemetery this way, whistle for our horse, and the game thinks we've done it. Another neat little trick that was discovered. Now we get back on Horsimus. Uh, gotta make sure John gets on his horse here. Just gotta slow down as soon as he runs towards his horse. Because if you go too fast, John will just run all the way back to the mansion instead of getting on his horse, which is uh, a lot slower. And I'm going to use uh, first person here in a second. Um, some of the cutscenes trigger faster when you're using first person. I'm going to jump my horse here into the trigger, and it triggers immediately. Normally, it would have a little fade out if you did this in third person, so this is faster. And again, trying to rubber band everyone a little bit by just skipping ahead. Not too far ahead though. Let's go. Gotta make sure start moving and then I can start moving again. Uh, see we have a donation? So we we do have a donation and uh, it's a $100 donation from Blue Mage uh, with the message, greetings from Austin. I love RDR2. Thank you so much for that. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, and I love Red Dead Redemption 2 as well. Would you believe it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to love this game to actually speedrun it, I would say. Because, uh, you know, the any percent run takes 13 hours. I mean, world record is 12 hours, 29 minutes. Um, 100 percent world record is 29 hours. So, yeah, you can do that segmented though, so thankfully. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, it's a very long game, uh, big project to learn all the strats. Uh, but yeah, if you love the game, um, I'm, I, I, I guess you couldn't do it if you didn't really like the game. Yeah, this is still my favorite game that, to, that ever existed. And um, even after speedrunning it for like um, a year and a half now, um, I can sit down and play casually. Like creating this save file, I had to. Uh, I actually um, went out to get um, this special Arabian horse um, and um, just prepared a lot of stuff. And yeah, I still enjoyed that immensely, even after all this, all these runs that I did. So. We're now getting close to where the camp is, and going to move slightly off course here, trying to rubber band our companions and skip some more dialogue by going on the left side of the broken wall here. And now we get to a very, very annoying point in the run, because we cannot actually skip this cutscene, very sadly. But I see we have donations, so this is a perfect time for that. Excellent. Uh, we have a $25 donation from Turkey saying, well, Dutch, maybe the real treasure is all the O'Driscolls we killed along the way. <laughs> we also have All Hail Goblin donating $10 saying, from your favorite American. Good luck, buddy. 
How are you, boy? Thank you so much for those Good. donations. Thanks. Thank you, okay. thank you a lot. Yeah. Abigail. Can I go play now? <sighs> All hail Goblin. So, well, one of my good friends. We met Mr. Brown. Uh, yeah. He good to see you, Joe. And I hope you're well. Is he now? You ever meet an Italian strong man before? <laughs> but yeah, Not we've got Jack back, circus. basically. Well, let me tell and you um, about in uh, the cutscene that we skipped, we kind of talked person. about more things we could rob. More Boys, things for us to get money to, to break free from the chains work. that bind First, us let's have a drink. and be free in the world. <laughs> and, um, the boy's safe, thank goodness. yeah. Thank you. So we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> but currently, I don't know how to say we're just waiting for this cutscene to be over. In the, in the Any Percent run, this is actually quite a nice break because he can, can go for the Ooh, toilet <laughs> real yes. quick. So we okay, take those, but that scene's now over, and uh, currently the gang is having a party oh because Jack is back. Uh, we can skip this entire party by just leaving and um, riding our horse away a certain distance, and then we can turn around and everything should be back to normal. So there's a certain point here past the train tracks when the map will change and all the mission icons appear. Now currently um, we are looking for... Also something that happened in the cutscene previously uh, is that Mr. Bronte, who we did the previous mission for, has invited us to a garden party at the mayor's house. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Because that's what we're about to do. Switching to first person again. Oh, hey, Arthur. Come on! If we're gonna make it to this party, we yeah. sure as shit better clean up Skip a little. two so cutscenes, and then we have to do, um... Yeah, it's a, a bit of a stealth mission, I guess. At, at some point, but at the start of the mission, we're only... We're only blending into um, the high society of saint -Denis. And again, I'm just uh, doing this in first person because um, it's a lot more, it's a lot nicer to move uh, in first person, mouse and keyboard. As long as the mayor behaves himself, you know, Mr. Brante, he has a uh, thing, you know, uh, respect. Jose, Bill, you join the party. We'll meet you out back after we pay our the little trick we can do here is uh, actually we'll skip ahead of Dutch if we hold down the side sideways button. Uh, doesn't look like the game is getting giving it to me though. Yeah, no. You can you can go ahead of both of uh, these characters here, and <coughs> you actually trigger the cutscene by us. Uh, it gets triggered um, the, the soon, as soon as you're close to the door. But yeah, I couldn't get the trick there, sadly. And here you can actually uh, lose time by going ahead of Dutch, because Dutch's AI gets confused. If you'll kindly follow me. So we just follow him. That You can't push him down the stairs or anything. So yeah, all we have to do is just follow. Gentlemen, enjoy your evening and welcome once again to Saint Denis. Ciao, ciao. He actually has an animation for opening the door, which is open already. That's also kind of funny. Now we wait for the audio cue here. Uh, Arthur's going to say OK. That means we can actually join the party. Okay. Go find the mayor. And um, yeah, we have to find the mayor. Um, you can do a lot of stuff. You can talk to all these characters. You can um, talk to more people and all that. Talk to some side characters. You actually get introduced to the guy for that you have to um, collect the exotics for uh, in this mission. But yeah, uh, right now we're just um, uh, we're already waiting for the mayor who is about to appear right here. You can talk to some people here. Just Everyone. I hope you're a fine He's actually pushing us, <laughs> and we're gonna walk oh, over here. With you? The I did no such thing. <coughs> but, Mr. Lemieux, 
I suggested that all of us as Americans had a duty no way to, to skip all this dialogue this land, sadly and that extends to Saint Denis. It ain't it's not a cutscene, so we can't skip it either and uh, yeah but it would try to make it so I will not deny idiocy so but perhaps now is not the time <laughs> You are Here is the cutscene. Let me skip. We have to take this drunk guy away from everyone. Also, another instance here uh, is when we walk back uh, in first person. The um, cutscene we get uh, triggers a lot faster. So we just turn around, Sit down walk back. And Thank you, sir. immediate cutscene. Normally, you'd have to like a little fade in if you did this in third person. Yeah. Now we have to follow the the, um, the servant here. Found find out a little more information about everything. Then uh, skip. Make him rubber band a slightly uh, by taking this route through the house. He is always going to take his time here. Um, but yeah, he's talking to a couple of people. He's talking to a, a guard no first. Um, then we he'll talk well to uh, the guy we were Mr. following Robert earlier, a character called Luca. And, reading whatever he likes. <laughs> we're watching and yeah, like basically, Thank you, we have to stay hidden here. If we get detected by the uh, yes, servant. Sorry. Oh. I'll oh, okay. To get Interesting. Somehow. Don't mind me. Normally, you don't get caught if you're take, taking cover. So yeah, bit of time lost there. Moving a lot. Oh come on. <laughs> Yeah, very unfortunate there. Hey. Yeah, we could because we're not triggering the dialogue here as well. Take cover here. Take cover. Is everything taken care of? Ah, the telephone it keeps ringing. The mayor said he will sign later. <coughs> we're gonna talk to a maid next. Once this dialogue starts, we can go to the next position. Taking cover in a third person here is also um, something we do. Um, in first person, you get detected more easily, I figured. But yeah, we just have to wait for him to reach the stairs, and once he reaches the stairs, we can go up after him. Uh, if you want to read a donation in the meantime, Oh, I'll happily read the donation. Uh, so we have uh, also from uh, from the previous run, uh, Selena coming in with a $260 donation. Yes. Uh, with a message for my deaths in Alien. Thank you to everyone who watched the segment. Good luck to remaining runners. Thank you so much, Selena, for that donation. Look. All right. Now we uh, follow the guy. Gonna um, go into this room here. We just have to wait for him to do um, his thing over here. Put something in this um, in this drawer that we want to find. And once he moves, we can go in the room and find out what exactly he put away. Mr. Leviticus Cornwall. Top secret. Extremely confidential. Extremely confidential, yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> That's why a servant carries it, carries it around. So we go back to Dutch.
Now we skip the cutscene and then we exit the party. The start of this run is uh, not very interesting, unfortunately. Uh, the chapter becomes a lot more fun later on. Uh, but uh, yeah, the start is a couple of missions that are not very interesting. Um, but yeah, it's going to get better from here on out. We're going to leave. That could be the one thing we need. There's also that trolley car station Senor Bronte told us about, and I heard about a high stakes poker game. A high stakes poker Come game. On. Wonder what that could be like. We'll find out later. So the game warps us back to the camp now. <laughs> And we just go on the balcony here. And jump off. <laughs> Breaking Arthur's ankles, but yeah, he's a tough guy. He can he can take that. And we go start the next mission. Hello, Mary Beth. How are you, Arthur? Fine. Important for this How mission uh, to whistle for well, the horse well, uh, because we get put on. We don't actually get put on our horse. We get put on uh, a wagon. Fusion road. No. So uh, yeah. Wagons are another thing that I prefer to use um, to use um, mouse and keyboard for because it's uh, while on horseback it's. Um, it's uh, faster to tap the A button on your controller. Uh, on a wagon, if you hold shift, you go the exact same speed. So it's uh, a lot nicer. You don't have to tap the uh, A button the whole time. You can just hold shift. Uh, quality of life change, I suppose. But yeah, we just take uh, routes that goes... Um, doesn't follow a particular road. We uh, we just have to reach a certain point um, where um, we're looking for Tilly right now. Tilly got kidnapped. Tilly is a uh, lady from our camp. I think there's a guard. Right, we found her, and now uh, we head after this guy. We don't actually have to kill this guy. We can um, skip ahead to the right a bit more here. We have to head down to the lake. Make sure we uh, select the dual pistols here. Kill this guy first. I think that last one's the boss. Last one with and we'll take him back. If you shoot him, he uh falls off his horse. Uh we can do an animation skip once he actually drops to the ground. We can park a horse over him. Make these nice and tight. Pick him up. Uh we skip the animation for hog tying him and picking him up. Uh that's a good amount of time save. That actually went really well. Um, our horse is following us here, and uh, we have to make sure it's actually following us back to the uh, other part of the mission. Because we will need um, to use fast travel for the first time in this run. Okay. We uh, grab him off the horse, drop him on the f on the ground. So he's still alive. Uh, you get the choice here if you want to kill him or uh, leave him alive. Um, we always spare him because the cutscene is slightly Let's faster. And yeah, uh, we're getting to the point now where we have to choose our actual beard style. So, um, how are we doing on that bid war? Yes, let me do a last refresh on that and check here. So, we have the flying fork style. The flying the fork. winning option. Flying fork wins. Mm. Very good.
I was hoping that one would win, to be honest. <laughs> so we have to go to San Denis now. Um, we, this is the fast travel feature, by the way. Uh, fast traveling, um, you always get these cutscenes um, that is basically a loading screen for you. Um, and we have to talk to uh, we have to talk someone to someone first. Basically, uh, we met a character during the um, during the high society party that we've been at. Um, we have to talk um, to one of the people that we met there and get introduced to some of the uh, Native Americans. And uh, which will become more important later on in the game, but we have to do one mission later in this chapter as well for them. Mr. I believe we've met. So this is basically only a cutscene, nothing else. That was basically it already. Now we do the. Um, oh, <laughs> look, that got, I got stuck there. And now we go to. Uh, the next mission marker on the map, which is the um, mission where we have to get our beard style and we're also going to buy ourselves a suit. Of course, we're going to fix you up so fine, no one will notice a thing. Hello, can I help you, gentlemen? Make this gentleman look like the Duke of New Orleans. It was the English's fault. Uh, All right, wearing the suit Come now. Let's uh. get to the barber. Sure. Good luck tonight, gentlemen. Oh, I couldn't get in front of Trelawney yes, there. So That's not that big of a deal. Um, it's yeah, it's um. What is? This is a very he slow walk. Planned. We can't. Indeed, it's not we've tried to find all. ways to make this you faster, but yeah, you are bound to Trelawney's speed here, so you can't really move any faster than this, sadly. There's some more um, strategies that we do um, after we've been to the barber. We can um, we can do a funny little glitch if I get it. Because uh, we can we have to move into a a, a coach to to go to the to the riverboat, um, and that's basically. Yeah, you'll see if I get it. Um, but yeah, the game gets confused. If you go in early enough, you can shuffle the seats, and then uh, the game keeps on switching you around on the left or the right seat. But first, we have to get ourselves uh, to the barber, where we will pick the uh, the fork Dutchman. Was it? Ah, um, no. I think it was the yeah, flying the, the flying fork. Flying fork. The flying yeah. fork. That was the uh, winning option. Yeah. My good man, could you smarten up, my dear Hick friend? Full styles. Uh. uh flying full. Where was it? Uh, there we go. Very nice. Looking good. Looking good. <laughs> well, very good, sir. There, no, very it's smart. Not good. Alright, I got the glitch. So if you're quick enough, uh, the game gives you the option to shuffle the seat. Uh, if you don't get it, Trelawney will actually walk all, all the way around, so it just switches us around. Uh, it will do that again, um, probably. Like I had a, a, I saw it a couple of times in practice. Usually this is like another break in the run, so you just, uh, um, you can just le let the game play out. Another small break you can take to like go for some food or go for another toilet break if you couldn't do it earlier. A lot of downtime in this game, um, in the speed run. So usually you always have. Uh, there are always breaks you can take. That's why the the actual any percent run being 13 hours is actually bearable because there's so many breaks you can take for 
any needs that you may have. So maybe we could uh, use this break to talk a little bit about uh, incentives. Yes. Uh, so we have a, a couple of different incentives. So when you are uh, donating your uh, money, uh, you can choose to put it towards uh, these different incentives. And for example, we have right now open the uh, Kill Lord British uh, incentive for the Ultima 9 Ascension run, which currently sits at uh, 277 out of uh, 1500 uh, dollars. So uh, uh, let's get uh, that up uh, to that number and get it met. Keep those donations coming. That has all been all right, we've been switched around again, and yeah, <laughs> switching us around again. <laughs> Come on. Okay. If you pay attention to this sort of stuff, it's kind of funny. Switch to first person again, except before the. Um, Very good, sir. Thank you, George. Good luck, sir. For the comfort of using mouse and keyboard for this. Uh, once we're on the boat, actually, we have to play some poker. It's scripted. Um, yes, it's always scripted. Uh, it's actually supposed word. to be, because um, this is kind of a rigged game. We're trying to rob people here, but um, yeah, we just the dealer is on our side. He gives us the cards that we actually need, and um, yeah, you'll see it in a bit. We don't have to wait for these other guys. We can just walk straight onto the boat. Champagne. All around. And now we're in the boat. Are you joining us? Good evening, gentlemen. Arthur Callahan. Sorry, I'm late. I had some uh, unfinished business at the bar. That beard is magnificent. I love it. <laughs> so we have to fold the first hand. Because basically, um, we're only after one guy, the guy sitting across from us. And all the other guys uh, are not important, so we have to get the game has to get rid of them basically. So um, yeah, everyone's just going to go all in, and he's going to win everything because it would be too complicated with more than one player. I mean, they all go all in with king high, queen high. That's. <laughs> Not something that would normally happen, but yeah, the game has to just get rid of all the other guys. <laughs> there is uh, more gambler challenges in this um, in this game that are required for the 100% completion. Um, they are very, very um, annoying because all of them are basically RNG. So it's... Um, <laughs> There is one challenge, for example, where you have to play blackjack. Uh, you have to hit three times, so you have to have a total of five cards, be under 21, and beat the dealer. And you have to do it three times. Big, big um, run killer, because it can take you. Um, it can take you 15 minutes if you're very lucky. Or it can take you an hour and a half. Like, it's really that bad. For speedrunning, a complete nightmare, of course. I think in the world record, uh, it took me... It took me like 40 minutes or something. So there's, e there's even potential for, you know, for a lot of time saved there. Because I think in the previous record that I had before the current one... Uh, it only took me 15 minutes. So yeah, it's um, uh -oh. always hard. Yes, you little beauty. Hard lines, Mr. Blind. Because you Mr. can't, you can't control the uh, RNG you get in that. Uh, you have to get uh, deal with what you get given. Gentlemen. And now um, I started last we uh, beat the guy with our uh, rig poker game. Sure. We can do a little trick. Here, instead of waiting uh, on the other side, we can actually go because the uh, the room here, the rooms here are all symmetrical, and uh, we can rubber band the pit boss by going up the other side of the staircase. Oh, I think I, yeah, he got stuck somehow. Okay, interesting. Yeah, so far. Indeed. 
make sure that I'm not too far ahead. So I always uh, walk backwards here so I can always have an eye on his movement. Because it says return to him now. Just want to make sure I do everything right here. Very good. I'll wait for him in this part. Next, we'll be hiring Negroes. Yeah, he's got his little dialogue here that makes him seem like a very likable character. Because <laughs> uh, the guy who's uh, the guard that we're following here actually is Javier, who's uh, part of our gang. So yeah, we're just taking um, just give me one second, sir. everything that's in the safe here. Also very important to switch back to third person here because... You get st uh, stuck in an animation don't if you don't. Reach for that gun. Take his gun, Arthur. Now we can switch back to first person. I guess you were right. Only an idiot would give a greaser a gun. Loot the safe. Idiot, huh? But he has another gun. We do a little funny. <laughs> you do only do this on a uh, on a uh, keyboard and mouse. <laughs> It's always funny if you have music playing in the background. Um, I used to have a running joke with uh, my, my own, because uh, I always have like song requests on on my personal stream. Uh, and there used to be a running joke that everyone would try and play the YMCA song, and I would just do the YMCA thing. <laughs> Managed to get it a couple of times, uh, time it somewhat correctly. But yeah, that was always a lot of fun. And. How exactly are we getting out of here? I ain't too sure. Right. There's a little this trick we can do here by holding down um, A and uh, S at the oh same time, no like lead. moving sideways. We move down these stairs a, a bit girls. faster. Can cannon off the side. Nice uniform, by the way. Thanks. Also, we're going to have a, the yeah, best voice line of the entire game anyway, here. We shouldn't give ourselves away till we know we need to. Maybe we could still blend into the crowd when it all goes crazy. Which it surely Here we go. will. To the bar, senor! <laughs> to the bar, senor! <laughs> Best voice line in the entire life. game. You boys sure know how to put on a show. <laughs> That's wonderful. Alright, but obviously we can't have a mission like this without having a big shootout at the end. There he is. Now, don't be a sore loser. Well, we're gonna... Just kill a bunch of guards here. I just have to kill a certain number of guards I we can run. That actually went pretty well. And now we swim back to shore. Well. And that's the riverboat mission done. Now we uh, actually use a form of fast travel um, that is actually the quickest way of fast traveling, which is a coach. Come but on, first girl. we have to ride to the coach station. So um, there are three, uh, basically there's three or make it, you could say four different ways of fast traveling in this game. So you can take a coach. Um, the coach only goes to the um, certain towns and you need to have unlocked all the towns to unlock fast travel there so we're going to Valentine right now this is the fastest way of um, fast traveling um, uh, the personal camp uh, which is what we used earlier um, when we um, just traveled to fast travel to Saint Denis um, this is the second fastest way uh, the third fastest way would be to use uh, the camp fast travel. We're going to also use that in, uh, in this run, uh, which is like basically fast traveling from your own, uh, not personal camp, but like the caravan where everyone else is at. And the fourth and uh, slowest method of fast traveling would be to take a train. Uh, because the train always has very, very long cutscenes. Um, to 
see that you see the train driving off from the station uh, as well as arriving into the station and there's a very annoying um, thing that can happen where you actually watch where Arthur um, is smoking a cigarette and uh, you can't skip that. Oh, that's a little <laughs> horse racked all there. <laughs> but it's fine. You have to get on the horse again. Um, the game basically wants us to, to sneak into the factory. We don't have to do that. Uh, we can just um, run in there. Preemptively selecting our dual pistols, making sure they're reloaded. Jump up here. Shoot out this window. Get out this ledge. Crouch. We can go inside the window if I can get it. Yeah. And we can just go straight into the door here. Instead of walking all the way around, this is a lot faster. You must be damn bad. So yeah, we're helping out the uh, Native Americans here. Um, we need a file, basically. Native file by the Leland Ore Development Company. So what we do is basically we just spam the uh, beat button to beat up this guy. Okay, we don't want him to be on this side of the room, so... Go around this side again. Danbury. Think, man. Mind is a terrible thing to lose. Especially over such a nice boy as this. It's here. It's here. Alright. Also, another thing that is very important um, and actually makes runs invalid. It doesn't actually. I'm just making this up. Uh, we have to take um, Danbury's hat Done right here. Good, because this is a very Real cool hat. Good. It doesn't actually get saved to your uh, inventory, sadly, but um, yeah, it's a running joke I have with, with, um, with one of the other runners of this game, Demo Mute, um, who's a very good friend of mine, and um, yeah, we just have this joke that we have to pick up this hat or else our runs become invalid. But yeah, we just go out the window here. Unfortunately, there's some guards outside of the window. But somehow, magically, would you believe it? There's an explosion, and we get saved. We don't have to kill any of these uh, enemies from past them. So we're going to get followed by um, two or three uh, mounted enemies. We have to kill all of them. Which is very easy. I'm using the uh, controller for this with uh, the auto aim or the aim assist. Here comes that guy. So yeah, the game has a dead eye mechanic as well. And now we're going to utilize uh, another hey, fire bottle skip. Just in time. We light ourselves on fire. We basically trigger the end of the mission straight away. We're going to enter and leave silently. And we are off. Um, you always have to wait for a little bit to be able to activate the uh, personal camp. Uh, we fast travel back to the gang's hideout, Baby Bell, and we're going to have a really big shootout next. <coughs> so in terms of uh, the story, what happens in Chapter 4 is we've got Jack back, uh, but, or like the story in general, not just in Chapter 4, is... Uh, um, we're a bunch of outlaws, a gang of outlaws. We uh, try to escape um, to a place where we can be free. Um, 
they talk about Tahiti, Australia, um, basically somewhere that's far away, far away from the um, repressed American uh, way of becoming a more civilized and lawful country. Um, and yeah, basically everyone's doing, just saying, yeah, we need more money and then we can actually go away. So surely, surely it has to, has to work. Like uh, at some point, yeah, we have enough money and we can go away. Surely, right? Um, and yeah, this is a pretty big shootout here. Um, gonna skip the first few enemies by just walking back inside. We have to wait for the visual cue of uh, the wagon appearing. There it is. Yeah. Charles will say wagon, wagon. And then we can put the cabinet in front of the door. Just push that over. Good. Now everyone I got this. Get these windows covered quickly. John, you take the windows over there. Charles, you take the side door. There. Arthur, you take the windows in the back. So Go. everyone's wondering now, is everyone here? But of course there isn't. Someone's always missing. Everyone accounted for. I think. Hey! I said it's everyone accounted for. So we have to find Sadie. This is kind of the first um, instance of the run where Sadie um, is um, portrayed as the badass that she is. Why didn't you get inside? Ah, got the wrong guy first. Now we go back. We need you. Got to pay attention to my health here as well because uh, these enemies are very accurate. Will uh, will kill you. If you're not careful. Guys, uh, say to kill them. That's good. More enemies gonna come around the corner here. Yep. It's them dealt with. The uh. You can see that I'm using the dead eye uh, from time to time here. The dead eye basically um, reloads your gun and gives you very a very accurate shot. First shot, uh, you can tag enemies uh, in the dead eye. Um, yeah, it's it's very uh, useful for us uh, in shootouts. Whole place gives me the creeps. And now we're going to utilize the um, camp fast travel, so the third slowest way of um, fast traveling. If we move into first person again, we open this door sideways so we don't get an animation of Arthur reaching out to open the door. Dodging all the NPCs here. We get stuck behind uh, John here anyway, so this is a... Uh, he always takes this path up here. This is Arthur's room here basically. And we fast travel to, what would you guess it, Saint Denis for the third time this run. So the way, um, why this is um, slower than fast traveling from your personal camp is because you get this animation of Arthur getting onto the horse and um, yeah the loading time is just a little bit faster. Uh, slower, sorry. But yeah, they call this fast travel. <laughs> Weirdly enough, when really it isn't that fast. Uh, in the first, uh, or in the original Red Dead Redemption game, you uh, actually have the ability to fast travel to waypoints, which is very, very useful. And uh, a big shame that they br didn't bring that back because it would be very useful uh, for us. But we have to do with what we got. And we basically are 
trying. We're gonna go and rob the trolley station now, which we have been told has a lot of money. A trolley station. Hmm? Because that makes sense, yeah. They have so much money there. A trolley, uh, a, a trolley ride costs like 25 cents. So obviously, obviously they must have a lot of money in that, in those cash registers. Make sure we take our guns here. Just to make the shootout that we have to do here uh, a lot more easier. And here is a part. Um, so some of the um, missions, like you always get the mission name. We have to kill these uh, people here, sadly. It's, uh, I don't like doing this, but yeah, it is faster, unfortunately. Fortunately. So the way um, when you start a mission, you always get the mission name uh, appear on the bottom right of the screen. Um, sometimes you are able to um, skip the cutscene before the mission text appears. Um, it's 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 sometimes it's like really hard to do. There's a mission in chapter six where you have to do it frame perfect in order to skip it. Um, but yeah, uh, you can't skip a cutscene when the mission text uh, is on screen. So that's very annoying. And uh, yeah, it's always a little bit of time loss. Depending, it's also it also depends on how long the mission name is um, to see like how how um, quickly you can skip it. But yeah, we're just finding out right now that there's almost nothing here. There's almost nothing here. Cash in there. He told us there was. Look again. There's no stacks. A few dollars in coins. That's it. Damn. We got so yeah, we find out we've there's been tricked, and uh, everyone and uh, the police are onto us. So we have to escape now. You don't actually need to kill any of the enemies here. Is I just do it for the fun of it. We are really moving here. Surely nothing bad's gonna happen. But yeah, we've crashed basically. <laughs> okay, sure. All right, we are. Uh, don't mind the aiming here. I'm not. I know I'm not aiming for the people, but yeah, it's supposed to be like a, an effect, I guess, for uh, for how we uh, just can't see straight for a little bit because of the uh, crash that we just had. Alright, we have to just kill all of the enemies that are in front of us. These two up here on the balcony were important. And now we just have to follow uh, Dutch and Lenny. We're utilizing uh, the... Um, um, Flammable shotgun ammo again. For these next few enemies. And we'll run out of ammo here. This is all calculated, by the way. I have exactly six bullets in my shotgun for this circumstance. is for the, uh, the um, kid in the first mission of the chapter. Oh, for the, uh, not the kid, but like the, the wagon the kid gets on. And then uh, the rest are used in this shotgun, uh, in this um, shootout. Um, we can't actually use, you can ha I could carry more uh, flammable shotgun ammo, 
but the problem with it is because it actually does light the enemies on fire um, there is a possibility that your NPC companions like Dutch and Lenny in this case uh, can walk over um, the burning corpses and uh, actually light themselves on fire and obviously uh, they uh, take damage then and might die so obviously we don't want to do that Also, a uh, very uh, good point to mention here, the score in this game. Very, very good score. Um, definitely uh, worth giving a listen to. Actually have the uh, both the score uh, and the soundtrack uh, CD for this game. Uh, I listen to that in my car sometimes. Gonna throw a stick of dynamite here. Shoot that straight away and it clears the blockade. Apologies for that. Don't worry about me. Just get us out of here. Now we come to um The end of the mission. There's a pretty funny cutscene here, uh, where we go out through how much everyone's got. Like you know everyone gets Dutch? like uh, fifteen dollars. Yeah, fifteen dollars and a quarter. And uh, this part here is always like weird with um, setting up camp. Sometimes it takes up to 20 seconds until it actually allows you to set up your own personal camp, but it didn't take me that long this time. That's very nice. And we uh, fast travel to uh, Shady Bell again, which is where the camp hideout is. And we are about to start uh, the mission called Country Pursuits, which is a very, very well-liked uh, mission in uh, speedrunning. This is supposed to be the spooky nighttime mission where you wade through the swamps. So, um, we actually have to move through the house. You can't start the cutscene from here. We have to talk to Dutch, but he's up there. Uh, also, um, this is one of the missions that if you w if I was to start this in first person, I would not be able to skip the mission text, like uh, I mentioned earlier. But in third person, as soon as I open this door, so I can skip. Arthur, you get the it's like this Robert little fade cool. in into and the actual cutscene right. that the we have the opportunity to skip the cutscene on. It does no favors. Come on. We need to go <coughs> see a man about a boat. A boat? We're headed to a settlement called Le Gras. I met a boatman there called... But first Thomas. we have to do uh, one of the fastest the horse rides, um, so which is actually very nice, because um, Dutch's AI actually moves at max board. speed using his horse. So he'll be expecting some kind but of we prize. will just uh, get right. on the back of okay, Horsimus. Horsimus, of course, is such a fast horse. Thought, okay, follow me. The one thing that we have to be mindful of is, or well, we can't actually do anything what? about it, but if there's a, a wagon there. that spawns on the road, here in a second, uh, it's possible that Dutch will actually fall, uh, crash into the wagon and fall off. And there's also a possibility that he will not actually get back on his horse, but instead run. And at that point, you have to uh, checkpoint fail this and um, 
and uh, do, uh, do it again. It's very annoying if it happens. We have a wagon coming up here. Let's see what his AI does. Uh, looks like he's going to the side. Yeah. Nice. Well done. But yeah, this is actually moving at max speed here, uh, which is not something that happens uh, during these um, missions where you have to follow someone. So there's a bit of a, um, a theory going on here with um, the, the crash we had with the tram earlier is that Dutch has actually hit his head because he says he did, he hit his head quite badly, that he actually um, took brain damage from that crash and is now uh, turning mad, basically. Um, this is unconfirmed though, and I don't personally believe it. I believe he's always been a bit of a madman. If we uh, go over here, we can good to see you, my friend. Hello, Mr. trigger the cutscene immediately. And yeah, now we are back into the uh, spooky part. Uh, there is... So we have to move... Is it is very slow. It is um, a very slow mission. Uh, this is why people don't, you know, actually, uh, people don't actually like speedrunning. This mission is uh, one of the most boring ones because you're really bound with this slow moving speed, and there's nothing you can do to change that. Basically, could we uh, lighten it up a bit with some uh, prices? Yes, please do. Awesome. So uh, when you are donating money to um, Alzheimer Fonden, uh, you can also be entered into um, winning uh, some of our fantastic prizes that we have. And there's uh, quite a big selection of them. Uh, you can check them all out on the ESA Marathon uh, website. But we have some cool uh, posters, uh, some Mario plushies, gaming per peripherals and uh, some of our uh, grand prizes including a custom ESA Nintendo Switch that looks absolutely gorgeous. Does, so yeah. check out the list on the website and get those donations in to be entered into uh, the drawings of these prizes. So um, we have to go to this island over here. We can't go straight away because we actually there is like a death trigger if we move too far ahead of um, our companions here, or we'll just get eaten by an alligator. Yeah, we have to actually, there will be um, a point where we have to wait and let an alligator pass. can never really tell when it is, but yeah, we have to wait for our companions anyway. Gonna tell us to stop. There we go. Stop where you are. Here is the alligator. I'm staying as still as I can. Here, alligator. Hello. Um, I do this in first person too. Um, basically, I do the the entirety of this uh, part of the mission in first person, because um, we can use this um, the uh, mechanic that I used before, where I held um, A and S at the same time, like move sideways. It doesn't help us here at the moment, but um, later on it will actually help us to move a lot faster in uh, the actual swamp. And also doing this in first person, uh, we're going to have to help uh, Thomas here clear out this trap, which is stuck in the mud. Uh, if you're in first person here, uh, the game is less 
um, bothered about placing Arthur in the correct place Ooh. to trigger the animation because you don't actually see your own character. Um, so oh triggering animations so in first true. person Push. is a lot faster in fool. in many um, circumstances. I guess this was uh, it's used um, used um, a lot in um, in the 100% speedrun where we have to. Um, Pick flowers and such well, and, and stuff. You first, Dutch. We just keep so yeah, we have to wait here again. Um, we will um, encounter three more alligators, but we don't have to wait for them to move. Um, we can actually shoot them. If you shoot them once, they just go away. But we have to wait for them to get triggered by our companions here. One shot each. Uh, of course, I didn't kill them, but um, I just made them go away. Um, and I can move straight away. I can move to the... Because the game is about to let us split up here anyway. I'll split us up from our companions. Uh, we can just move to this little island here. Obviously, you don't want to wade through the water because it takes a bit longer. Or wade uh, through the water as little as possible. What? So there's like a little um, half moon form island here. And here we are that seeing jewels. Be, yeah. Did I? Okay. Hey, you in a tree. What are you doing? We have to go to this boat. Okay Getting there? to this boat will trigger the cutscene. And now we have a little, <laughs> another part where <laughs> we don't have to do anything. So, uh, who are these fellas, Thomas? Two new friends of mine. I'll explain later. Jules, we are very happy to have finally made your acquaintance. Basically, um, we we're helping Thomas here. Um, the idea behind it is we want to get revenge on Mr. Bronte, who told us about the trolley station earlier. That was basically a setup for us to get um, to get arrested and um, you know us to get you know, taken out of uh, contention, I suppose. So the idea is now to talk to uh, help Thomas, so he owes us, so he can take us on a boat to attack Bronte from the swamp side because that makes sense but obviously obviously nothing's gonna go right here oh yeah we pulled free surely nothing bad's gonna happen oh yeah no of course the game is introduction to the legendary alligator All right, this is the part where we uh, move sideways here. So I'm looking like to the side here. Um, once we get to Jules, he'll get pulled underwater again and we have to look for him. Uh, there's a bunch of different places here he can spawn. Uh, it always takes a certain amount of time. Um, and obviously it's never going to be close to where you are, so I'm just going to move to the furthest possible spot. A good spawn here, because it's right on the way to back to the boat. And again, we are uh, holding down A and S. And we're just moving back to the boat. I don't know why exactly um, moving sideways here is faster. It's uh, weird how it works, but um, it is faster. That's what we're doing. All right, we have. Um, we can shoot. So we're now gonna take some shots at the legendary alligator. Very uh, big. Big little thing. Big little thing? Big thing. Keep 
<clears throat> now we're gonna have to do some first aid on uh, jewels. Gonna be okay, son. Gonna be okay. Just thank your old Uncle Dutch. I heard that. And this is how you uh, do first aid. Just press a bunch of buttons. <laughs> I've stopped the bleed. All right, the um, alligator is gonna okay. come back a second if time here. Get a fever. And this is actually um, the more the fever. more you hit the alligator here. Fever is the least of our worries. Um, Look who's back. God damn it. So I'm gonna take out my second pistol as well here. Oh. I'm not hitting it. The more you hit it, the faster it goes away and uh, ends the mission. Okay, I think it's had enough. Now, Jesus, can we get back now? <sighs> and now. Uh, the game puts us uh, in a fake um, camp. We actually have to... Um, we can't fast travel from this from this campfire. We have to actually um, tear it down first and set it up again and so we can actually fast travel. And then... Oh, we get rain here. Uh, if you get rain, uh, Arthur puts up a tent as well, so you get a longer animation. And we are fast traveling to Lagra, which is the place that we just have been at. And uh, yeah, basically we have a big shootout coming up now. Uh, we are going to do what I ta talked about earlier uh, and attack Bronte's mansion from the swamps. This is something, also something that I've learned recently. You can uh, get so onto the pier here instead of having to walk around. Arthur, there you are. Come on. And skip the cutscene, and we are now basically here. Stay quiet. What are you doing? If you alert them early enough. You can uh, trigger the. Uh, you can do it sneakily first. Like the game suggests, you you know you sneak your way into the mansion. But yeah, this is a big shootout here. A lot of enemies we have to kill. I can't move away from my companions too much because I'll get a mission fail. Because it says right now, return to the gang. Because uh, when you when you trigger it early, uh, it they. Uh, Glitch out and um, can like. Want to stay focused here just a second. All right, that was actually a pretty quick shootout. Yeah, you see how they warp the over here now. Take a specific route through the house here. I use the uh, shotgun here. the guy we're looking for. Saying a very bad word okay. in Italian. I'm sorry, friend. I, I, no, name your price. Name your price, every man. So, um, 
Okay, okay. No, I surrender. We I have to carry him back to the sure. boat. Nah, just take him. I want to take a healing you potion can, yeah. first. Potion, uh, healing tonic. Shit. Yeah, and then pick him up. I, I want the extra health here. Um, because uh, we have to... We can basically avoid a lot of enemies. Like, we don't have to kill everyone that's coming up here. Um, but, you know, we are pretty vulnerable. So, taking the extra health here, I think, is worth it. lost Bronte because I got hit by the cop. That's unfortunate. But um, at, uh, the, what, so, what sometimes can happen because Bronte's on actually very little health. Uh, can't skip the cutscene. Okay, that was weird. I could not ki skip the cutscene. For normally, you can skip it straight away. But yeah, we're already on to the last mission of the game. Not last of the game, but of the chapter. Look at this magnificent beard. So um, we are robbing the city bank now i'm telling you that's this is the way to do this job the distraction will buy you all the time you need jim look the bank karen tilly abigail i sent them all they all say the same thing there's no more than one armed guard and the police i see we have a donation so if you want to go ahead and read that sure uh, actually this donation comes from uh, arthur and it's uh, fifteen dollars and a quarter, <laughs> saying, "Take my trolley heist money. I don't want it." <laughs> Thank you so much, Arthur. And this went to the uh, Skyrim uh, create your character uh, incentive. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Arthur. How soon are we shipping out? As soon as we get a passage organized, go down to Argentina and another around the Cape. What about the money in Blackwater? We're just gonna leave that behind. Forget that. Yeah, this Go mission on. is uh, basically set up in three different parts. Actually, four, you more. could say, because this horse people. ride is one part. Uh, very is slow, town, nothing you can do about it, basically, operation. to speed it up. Uh, the second part is the actual bank, bank robbery. Right. Um, after the bank robbery, we have a shootout. Police. And uh, after the shootout, we have the escape. And it's also like, so you start with horse riding, then you're like on foot uh, during the bank robbery and the um, and the shootout. And during the escape is like a stealthy part of the game. Um, so yeah, this mission has basically all a lot of different uh, elements to it. So yeah, the idea is to that they are going to set up a distraction, um, so all the city cops will move away from the bank, and we have time to rob it. Which um, only yeah, you'll 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 see it. It doesn't work that well for us. Actually, you won't see it because I skipped the cutscene. <laughs> Fellas, 
It's a time to appreciate how beautiful this game looks. Uh, I can pr proudly say that um, every time uh, it gets announced that this game uh, is going to be run at ESA, um, Tech is always uh, having a sigh. <laughs> like, <sighs> okay, I guess we have to download the big game again. Because it is the largest game by far that um, they had to they have to download each time. 115 gigabytes, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, a uh, very large game. But yeah, we have to wait here so we have time to clean our weapons. Cleaning your weapons is by no means necessary, but um, it just makes shootouts a tiny bit easier. Here's the dis the, dis the distraction, which is like basically an, an explosion that happens over here. Sorry, but I have to kill these two uh, NPCs just because uh, they take the longest to go into the room over here. I have to force the bank manager just uh, aim your gun at him. We can also shoot around him. Don't shoot him, of course. That won't work. But yeah. Just scare him a little bit. Now we have to unlock a safe here. Alright, so the combination here is 19, 72, 54. In the bank robbery we did in Chapter 3, uh, we were able to blow up the... Um, we didn't actually have to crack the saves, we were just able to um, uh, blow them up. Uh, this is not an option here. <coughs> so yeah, uh, what happened in this cutscene that I just skipped is that Hosea, uh, Duchess... Um, such as Wingman, basically, also a member of our gang, has been uh, killed. He's been taken hostage by the Pinkertons. So yeah, we, here we just have to kill a certain amount of enemies. Uh, so yeah, we just use the dual pistols, switch on Deadeye here and there. Oh, that's an NPC. I'm stuck somewhere. Oh, good. Yeah, that was pretty quick. Once we get up to the roof, uh, we just have to wait for our companions, basically. Um, I'm not certain have to 
have to kill all the enemies here, but... Um, you don't need to use Deadeye here. Um, you can just take your time. I just use it uh, every now and then to reload my weapon. We lost control of the bank. The others are trying to hold them off. Okay. They're gonna show up with a Gatling gun now. The guy on the Gatling gun uh, is dangerous, so I take some extra precaution to make sure I can kill him in time. Unfortunately, we lose Lenny as well during the escape. Sad moment. He's actually still... <laughs> he's still uh, blinking, so... <laughs> Character model is actually not dead. Uh, always fun. So uh, we are moving to the sneaky part of the mission now. I don't need to go after Dutch, I can actually go first. And then we will hide uh, in this window here. Arthur, uh, Dutch goes in first and then uh, we can also go in. Actually, oh no, I go in first, yeah. I misremembered that. Alright, and now we're on to the last part of the mission. Which is the sneaky bit. And as we know, uh, stealth missions are always a speedrunner's best friend. Follow when it's clear. So yeah, don't. <laughs> even if you so much as stand up right here, this guy will spot you, and the mission will fail. Skip ahead of Dutch here. Staying crouched though. Hide behind. No, not this side. Arthur. Duck. Yeah, hide behind the seats. Have to wait for these guys to move out of the way. I don't see why we have to check the train. They just robbed Lemoyne National Bank. It's not like they're gonna take the first line out of town. But old Milton said. Milton said a lot. Come on, I don't want to be out here all night. There's actually two different dialogues that can play here. Uh, I don't think they're um, different in length, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, sometimes you get this dialogue, sometimes you get another. Okay, then. Shit, right, stop. Trigger Dutch here. Then we have to go over to the pier or to the docks. Whistle for uh, enemies. Hello? Distract the enemies. Did someone whistle out here? Shit, another one. And now we get to a really, really dangerous spot here. Um, so we want to follow Dutch here. Um, we have to move into cover. Like the game will always move us into cover. 
Um, but sometimes it can happen that uh, one of our NPC companions um, actually takes our spot that we took cover at. And yeah, you see, I'm like moved. It moved me. It actually made me. I'm, I'm stuck here, actually. Lane just waiting there for no reason. But yeah, it has happened to me. Like I got moved right in front of the enemies, and they spotted me. I can't kill all of them silently. So I'll just so wait, wait it out here. When they chase me, but yeah, time's way. um coming up here as soon. You heard what I said. Oh, I like it. So as soon as Charles has got him distracted. What in the hell? Who is? Excuse me, buddy. Hey, stop! 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 That is one of the most beautiful acts I ever saw. Come on. Time uh stops. When I skip the next cutscene, basically I wait here. And that's time. 134, it's so okay. Um, I will not show this cutscene because it's a spoiler. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, that's uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, Chapter 4. Um, thank you very much uh, for uh, allowing me to play this and showcase another chapter. Uh, Shoutouts to the Red Dead speedrunning community. We have a Discord, should you be mad enough to try and speedrun this. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, I um, obviously, there's a trend here. Uh, one chapter each ESA, so hopefully we'll see Chapter 5 uh, and ESA Summer. Um, and yeah. Um, we'll find out what happened here exactly, because what happens if we get on the boat? Who knows? Um, yeah, maybe you'll have to tune in in summer again. So, um, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you very much, and uh, I'll take it over, give it over to you. <laughs>